Welcome back to part two of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way, featuring our special guests. Now let's dive right back into the conversation and continue exploring their incredible journey. There was a lot of political unrest mm -hmm. um, and the the government at the time was more a, um, the dominant figure was more around uh, the Islamic um, extremism. Right. And we, because as Christians, we were, we are the minority and we were singled out. We didn't, they didn't like that a Christian was making more money uh, than them. So they went around the, the street and it was like something out of the Simpsons, the Simpsons where Sideshow Bob was uh, calling out names of people who they, or people who wasn't going to uh, kill. All right. And he wasn't, and he didn't call out Bart Simpson. But um, these men were literally on the road with like a big microphone reading out names of people who, who they were going to call. And they yelled out, Amir Bokhtor. And as soon as he did that, we knew that they weren't joking because they were just doing it. Like they weren't even scared. The police didn't care about it. There was literally, they were just calling out names of people who they were going to kill. So... so Okay, so you, they're on the microphone. They shout the name. You guys are in your house. Yeah. Did so. What did your dad do? He he did what he what he knew best. He looked into it and he knew that they weren't mucking around. Um, and they just he he had enough. He you know, I was two at the time, so he probably just thought, hey, I just had a new kid. Um, I'm sick of the threats. I'm sick of living in this country, in my own country, in my own home feeling like I'm threatened. So, so I'm assuming they didn't come in to grab him there. They were just letting him know you are targeted. And were, yeah. And they were, yeah. And they were serious. So they, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. I can't imagine. I'm visualizing it, but I can't imagine it, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 It's, it was a big thing. Um, people from our, all, all of our communities um, were worried and scared and, you know, they all came out into the street to visit my dad. Um, was it the only were, one in the street being shouted? Uh, there were several, several other names. So everyone else was going other, you know, to, to other people's homes, consolidating them. And, and everyone was panicking. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone was sort of like, it's in the, it's in the community and everyone was sort of thinking like, wow, what the hell, what does this mean for us? You know, all that type of thing. Everyone was worried. Yeah. Things yeah, are it, it, was, it was a big moment. moment doesn't it? Sorry? It's all right. It, it brings a lot of paranoia for everybody else as well. They don't probably yeah. know they've even yeah. though their name's Actually, not even mentioned. Especially this is a lead up. This isn't just like a one-off thing. Mm. Like it's been a lead up to, to this point. Some, you know, things were brewing. Um, yeah. So it was, it was, it was a big thing, especially because this is all they knew. They didn't know anything outside of Egypt. They didn't know anything else. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to imagine my life back home in England and that happening, you know, um, and I, I just couldn't, especially, you know, when you're so comfortable after, I mean, how old was your dad at that age? Yeah, probably what I am now, probably in, you know, in his 30s. Yeah. So yeah. what year was this then? You were two years old. This was? 1986. 1986, yeah. I knew, I, 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 I knew we're, we're <laughs> roughly the same age, not far off anyway. I'm a little bit older, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, so why Australia? Why was Australia on the map? Because obviously, obviously Australia's down here in the middle of nowhere. Um, Dad had some relatives already moved here. Yeah. So he thought, okay, well, I'm going to move to a country where, you know, I've got some people already there. But I think at the time, Australia had it um, had some type of agreement with, with the rest of the world. I, I think they wanted to increase... Um, uh, people coming over. So they had a lot of incentive. Yeah. And skills, um, for skills, skills and all that. Yeah. For, for skills and all that type of thing. So it was just the best, the best choice at the time. So before we get back to the Australia part where you, you landed and you, you're in the commissions, is there anything else part of that journey in Egypt that you, that we need to, to, to visualize before we come back here? Um, dad was a, like a very well proud known man. Like, um, people calling him sir. Wow. So sort of like, you know, like 
someone someone with status you know he would you know not not pull out the red carpet for him but it was sort of like that type of treatment where he was well respected um he had that type of status and that and the reason why i'm saying that isn't 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 to brag because my dad's a very humble man hmm. but it tells it tells a story about of hmm. of the contrast of what he, he he of what he faced when he was in australia what yeah what what did he do in in egypt then um as in his role yeah yeah so he was wholesaling petrol oh, and petrol is a, big money isn't it yeah yeah he was a big he was a big businessman wholesaling petrol um very successful he knew you know he knew everyone every you know he was liked and respected by everyone um yeah it was it was very lucrative so he's a respected man he's called sir so who has the audacity to shout his name down the street yeah so when when he knew that he knew that these guys weren't went 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 um mucking around who there were obviously some type, some part of other political movement with and that and they had guns as well it's not just they had a microphone they're coming around to show them to show him who's who you know whose business because he was friends with a lot of um the police stations there and he had a lot of connections as well but they couldn't this was too this was above yeah, yeah too big yeah so, so if he came out onto the street do you think they would have just done it there and then no i think they were just sending like obviously they i don't think they would have gone that far um out on the street but it was more like a warning a warning shot so it's a warning to do what to leave the country to leave yeah okay so they essentially won then didn't they essentially yeah yeah, I mean, who mm. cares? It doesn't matter, does it? The family safety is the priority. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Okay, so you're back in Australia. We're in housing commissions. Um, you, 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 you didn't have any money. So how did you survive? What did you do to survive when you first landed here? So um, we stayed with family, mm -hmm. um, and they helped us out. Um, I was borrowing clothes from my cousins, uh, and obviously the clothes that we, that we, that we bought over. Um, but luckily at the time the, the the government had some type of program where they would lend assistance as well um so that was a big so that was a big role um dad started to wash dishes oh wow so he was at the back of you know of a small small restaurant dingy restaurant um washing dishes and like it's the reason why I said earlier what what type of contrast that you know everyone had to um, realize is that you know he went from that to this, and it's not to put down people that wash dishes down. It's no. how he would have felt inside as a as a man. Um, he would have felt like a failure. He would have felt a lot of shame because. Um, you know, he was once this very proud man who was able to provide for his family. And now he's just having to do whatever it takes just to survive. No, it paints, it paints a good, I'm glad you did say it because it paints a very good picture of the transition in his mindset in order to, and, and, and what the lengths he had to go to, to support yes. you guys. So that's yeah. a really, that was a very pivotal part. I know I'm really glad you said mm. that. Um, so when you're coming into Australia, do you have to prove um, whether you have money or no money, what, what was it like then? Um, I don't think it was, to be honest. I mean, I was two. I, don't, I can't really remember. Of course. No, of course. Um, but I think it was more lenient. I think it was like, yeah, we'll, we'll take whoever in. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, if you can work, we'll take you in. We'll, we'll put you in a, you know, in a home. Um, we'll give you some, um, at the time it wasn't Centrelink. It was something else. Yeah. Um, you know, but your dad's paid, uh, is a, is I'm assuming by his line of work was paid a, a half decent wage. Mm -hmm. Did he have any money to bring with him and for you guys? Well, that was the thing. So m my dad had given his, his, his money to his accountant to protect and he was waiting for the transfer to come down, huh. but he didn't transfer it. Oh, kidding yeah. me. 
So, I mean, so, so to answer your question, obviously before, um, yeah, the government would be like, okay, so how much money do you have in your bank? You know, what type of work do you do? Can you sustain a life? And it would have been yes, yes, yes. Mm. Um, but when it came to transfer the money, um, yeah, our accountant was a little bit dodgy. So, it would have, it, I mean, to the Australian government um, officials, it would have looked like he was a, just another guy lying to get to get over here, right? Probably, probably. Um, yeah, yeah, it's because he's probably thinking like, you know, now I need help. But you, they're probably thinking, well, you you told us he didn't need help. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't, but I, but I, I don't think back then it was as is as strict as it as it was now. There was sort of like opening the gates for people to come in, you know, yeah. you know, um, a lot more welcoming. A, a lot's changed over since then, hasn't it? In terms of immigration. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I've paid a fortune yeah. to get my passport <laughs> and visas. Yes. <laughs> over and over again. Uh, so, um, okay. So you're borrowing clothes. Uh, oh, no, that was the question I wanted to ask, actually. How long did it, did you get any money from the account at any point? Later down yes. the track. Yes, oh, okay. later down the track. Um, my dad had to do a lot of legal stuff from here to try and get it from over there. Okay. So he had some friends over there that were um, helping him get the money over as well. Um, it probably took three to three to four years until we got the money. A lot of weight would have been lifted off his shoulders when it did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. But see, but like, those three or four years was uh, big for me mm. in a way that I didn't even know because uh, when I went, when I finally went to primary school, um, I didn't know, but I started to stutter and I didn't know why. And um, I was the only Egypt because because dad had now he had money, he could buy into you know like a normal residential area that typically not a lot of Egyptians would live in. So I was the only Egyptian in the class, and so because I looked different uh, and sounded different, um, I was bullied and teased for being the only Egyptian in in the class. Plus, I was a little bit overweight, um, and I also had a stutter. So things weren't things weren't going, you know, looking good for me. Yeah. Well, we know where the stutter started from, don't we? Now. As yeah. 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 So I didn't know. I didn't know. So um, did all throughout my have a thing. Like, did you? Did no, you they parents? just thought, you know, what's what's wrong with my son? He can't speak. He can't, you know. Teachers didn't even know. Teachers, teachers at the at at that time. Um, they put me in the too hard basket. I probably had ADHD, dyslexia. Mm. Um, and they probably thought, oh, you know, this, this person, you know, is an immigrant. He can't speak English, but in fact, English was the only language that I could speak. I, I couldn't, I, I didn't know how to speak Arabic. I was an Aussie kid. I was a Vegemite kid by then. Um, I could actually sing I am Australian because that was one of my favorite songs without stuttering. Wow. So, um, they put me into ESL. So for those who don't know what ESL stands for in other countries, what, what does that mean? Uh, English, as a sec- English as a second language. Yeah, yeah. And there are programs in schools when people do, because we've had children come from Iraq recently and they have to yeah. go to an ESL department or even an ESL school to yeah. learn for six, 11 weeks and then they return yes. to, their, to their main school. Yeah. 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 But it felt like I was there forever. <laughs> Did you leave the primary school to go to a different school? No, um, later on, yes, because I was just, uh, I was constantly at the bottom of my class. Um, I wasn't really looked after. Like, they just thought I was just a gone child. Like, I, you know, that I was, I don't know, that I was just so, so done, you yeah. know, that, that they couldn't help me. So they just put me into ESL. Um, the kids thought that I was the dumb kid. I thought I, I believed that I was a dumb kid because of that. You do, don't you? Though after a bit, you you start to. I mean, it, it, 
when you're going through these difficulties as, a, as an adult being bullied, you start to believe it's you. Yeah. And, and that's what the brain, I mean, there's proof that the brain tricks you and you yes. trick the brain, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you do, you start to doubt yourself. You then start to self-reflect and go, well, I must be the problem. Yes. And that's neural, uh, uh, neural, uh, neural plasticity working against you. Yes. Right. Not for yes. you, but, you know, yes. you, you, your brain's constantly going over day and night, going to sleep. It's me. It's me fearing the next day. That's why you got people go to bed late mm. because they don't want the next day to come as quick. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. carry on. So you're in, sorry, you're in school. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, in school, um, I was isolated from my peers constantly. I would go to playground without having friends. I would beg kids to be my friend. Um, actually bad. Actually, beg, actually yeah. Bad. yeah. 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 I, would, I would beg kids to be my, I think the hardest moment, not for me, because I was a kid, I didn't really know what was going on, but looking back at it from, for my mum, um, I would have to bring, like, I would want to bring home friends with me to play with my Atari or play with my Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And I would have to bring kids younger, like two years younger than me, um, so they can play with me. And I think, from memory, seeing my mum, you know, I think just be heartbroken that my cut, that my Sid, that my son, can't just bring home and you know, a kid the same age as him because, you know, because just because they they want to play together. You you probably felt empowered that somebody just wanted to come home with you though, right? Yeah, I was so excited. Yeah. I didn't know, I didn't care that he was two years younger or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, I was just so happy that someone wanted, to, someone wanted to play with me. I know how you feel. I, I, I did the same as an adult going to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got you to play with. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's hard, isn't it? It's and I can't even imagine it at that age as well because you, you I mean apart from just your housing and the clothes that you wear your whole like even just how a pit outside appears is different mm. uh, and and the big city versus what egypt looks like i've never been to egypt so i can only go off you know what i see on on pictures uh, and and what i can imagine but every your whole world is literally changing and in a little mind like that it's magnified by a thousand isn't it Time it by, is. Yeah. Time by yeah. Time, however you want to look at it. Yeah. 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 And it became my reality. Yeah. Which was a huge, uh, time. It's like, it's sort of like a timestamp because of what comes next, you know? So this was a pivotal moment for me. Mm. Yeah. How long did the stutter last for? Um, I reckon, I'm, th I'm 39 now. I reckon in the, only in the last two to three years. Wow. Yeah. I did a lot of speech, um, speech therapy. Um, it, it, it like it helped. Okay. But it didn't really get rid of it. Like it just helped me manage, manage it. Do you think that's because you've worked on yourself at such a deep level and you found happiness? Have you found happiness now? Yeah, so it's more than it's more than happiness. So what I found and what I realized, and this is it's the reason why um, it's the reason why TEDx wanted to speak to me. They found my on that note. Just want to <laughs> show this off. Yeah, yeah, I'm Proud wearing the moment. same jacket and I'm wearing the same uh, t-shirt yeah. just to pay tribute. I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Um, they wanted to hear from, from me and how I've been able to heal or resolve my inner stutter, which is the topic that I, that I, um, that I was, that I was speaking about that it wasn't my verbal stutter that was holding me back. Mm -hmm. It was my internal stutter. It's the self-belief that I couldn't be good enough. I knew the next steps. I knew the next moves to go to, um, but I hesitated. And more than that, what I realized is that I'm not sure if you know this about stutterers, but when I sang, I didn't stutter. Yeah. 
No, I've seen it. You when I happen. acted like someone else, mm. I didn't stutter. So, and I'm and I'm and I get goosebumps always saying this. Why was it when I acted like me, did I stutter? What was it about me? So when I started to understand um, my subconscious and what was going into my subconscious and what I was telling myself and what was living there, I found that there was a lot of um, uh, low, low confidence. There was a lot of fear. There was a lot of um, me needing validation, all these types of things. Mm. So whenever I thought about myself, of course I was going to stutter. Absolutely. You know, yeah, and you I didn't know. understand that. And like no one really, no one really like, like, no one really connected those dots together for me. Mm-hmm. They didn't know themselves, though, did they? They didn't know. No. So it was it was me going through this through this journey, and me connecting the dots. So I remember. Um, so fast forward, right? So back to, back to that business. And I'm sorry for going back and forth. No, but... no, go with the flow because it fills it in however you want to paint your picture. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, in the, in that moment when I was struggling and I was um, in the fetal position and I really needed like to know, I'm like, I, I just, I needed something, right? Anything. And um, I remember just sitting in, you know, feeling sorry for myself and my jocks and my singlet on the couch thinking, what the hell am I going to do with my life? I'm so screwed. Uh, you know, how am I going to pay rent? How am I going to do this and that? Just feeling sorry for myself. Mm-hmm. I remember turning on and watching um, a Tony Robbins documentary, I'm Not Your Guru. Yeah. And it couldn't come at a better time. Meant to be. Always does, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I remember thinking, I, I, I love Tony and I, and I know about him, but, I want to know more about him. There, the, like, there must be something in him that is making him so well known, that helps him get results in such little result in such little time. What is it? So I started to research him, and research what he studied, and I found that he's he he's famous for NLP, which is neuro linguistic programming. On that note, my quote, co- my co author does all that training and in, in, in the sports world. Yeah. Nice. So I know a little bit about that. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, so then I just, I just started read up on, um, reading up on it. And I remember, um, doing like an info two day course, just a light course. And I was blown away of, of the things that I didn't know. Like, remember, like this is a two day course. That's not really well known. And I had just done a, like, I've just finished my MBA, Mm. highly, highly recognized, highly respected. And I didn't learn any of this. Mm. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.